My name is Sean Gao. I work for a health informatics center based in the University of Dundee. Uh, my work mainly involves collaborating with all the existing uh, Scottish safe, haven, uh, safe havens and looking for different technique solutions that possibly could stream our, streamline our activities together. So today the talk is going to be about evaluation of the solutions for data-driven health research networks. Um, before I go into my talk, I need to uh, make sure that uh, all the information that are included in this talk does not necessarily reflect the uh, general opinion with the network. It's just me as a researcher, research output. So the project overview. So what we want to achieve in this project. Um, before I get into that, I need to give you a bit of a background of what, what, what we have achieved. So I started doing this job about four years ago, getting all the Scottish Safe Havens all together, uh, start talking with each other to see what, what, what are each other's like? How do you do this? And how do I do this? So we can understand um, the technical difference and also the fundamental infrastructure difference between us. And then uh, that work is published uh, in a JMR paper talking about the Scottish different networks, their individual uh, different similarities and how um, possibly together that we can work as a network better in the future. Um, and then further along that project, um, what we want to do is we want to see, obviously we're not going to reinvent the wheel. There are already quite a lot of existing solutions out there. Uh, and as a network, what kind of solutions that benefits us the most and can we adopt them? So that's the next research question that I'm looking into. That's naturally leading to this project, which is to work characterize the existing national or international data streaming research networks and their software solutions. So um, the first thing that we have done in this project is we categorized the health-related research sharing networks on three following points, how data is shared, Federation where is pulling, uh, how data comparability is achieved, harmonizing data or adapting the query codes, and who oversees most of the work. Is that the network or the user? And then after that work, we characterize the existing software solutions based on a framework that we propose um, that is based on the OIS, uh, OISI layered model. So um, a bit of background of the data sharing network. I guess this is... Um, this is really the terminology, the most general terminology we can find um, in terms of uh, uh, in terms of in terms of this this industry. I think um, in the UK it's generally being referred as safe haven or TRE, and internationally speaking, um, there are quite a lot of terminology being used for the same thing. So generally, what we looked is a data sharing network uh, that composed of a group of professionals, organizations that is established for the primary purpose of improve the data use. So for we, we looked at all those, probably not all, but most of the international media networks and see how, how they are set up, what's the difference between them. And uh, here in this figure, uh, it's illustrate uh, two of the scenarios. So one of the scenario is, even though the network exists, the different nodes don't really interrupt, uh, interact with each other. So the researchers, if the researcher need access to multiple nodes data, they actually themselves need to go and talk with each node and having access to the data themselves. Um, there are different networks that uh, is interoperable or fully connected network, which is illustrated in, in this image B. So a researcher only need to approach one of the nodes in network and uh, he or she can access to the full data hosted in the network. So in terms of the health data sharing, um, there is there's more barriers in terms of the health data sharing. Uh, examples are data governance, security, lack of standardization, historical reporting structure, and so much more. So all those topics has been um, quite quite well covered in the in the previous two talks. I'm not going to talk too much in this one. Um, here, this is the first 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 work package that we have done is we looked into. Okay, so we have quite a lot of networks existing internationally or nationally. Um, how how do we really um, look into them? How do we understand? How do we start? It's just so so different from each other. So the the general approach that we have taken is we look at three aspects of them. So we first ask, uh, are they data federation or data pooling? 
So for those who don't understand those terminologies, federation is you don't move the data, you move the algorithms. So you put the algorithms to the data, local data, get uh, deployed against the data, and then the result is pulled back. That's called data federation. And for pulling, that's actually moving the data. So basically taking the data to the algorithm. So basically you move the data to the central location and make it access to the researchers. Um, and then we look to the different aspects, harmonization data or adaptive analysis. So as I said, for health data, there's quite a lot of heterogeneity in the data itself. And when you try to work on multiple sets, data sets, uh, the data heterogeneity need to be addressed. And how you address it, there are two different ways. One is adopting a common data model, um, for, for instance, OMOP. Um, or the other one is you just adapt your analysis to the local data structure. You basically create a, a separate set of analysis for each of the different types of data. And then the third aspect that we look into is all those work involved of, of data, getting the data ready, data cleaning, data curation, uh, data pre-processing, all those work. Is that lead by the network or is that lead by the researcher? So is that the network doing most of the job or is a, a researcher doing most of the job? So this figure here is really just a 2D diagram showing the relationship between uh, a user-dependent uh, network and a, a network-dependent network, or the network is a data federation or data pooling. So taking um, the, the top, top left corner as an example, so if it's a data federation network and is a user dependent, what happens in that network is normally data sharing by federation and a user developed by your spoke queries to be excluded locally. And in comparison, if a data federation network is uh, network dependent, in that scenario, a data sharing by federation, but user develop generic queries and the network is in charge of changing those generic queries to adapt into the local data. And of course, this is only 2D dimension. We're only talking about two of the elements that we're considering. There is still the third element, which is whether you are using a common data model or not. So each of those um, quarters can be further split into two, depends on whether a common data model is used or not. So now we have this uh, structured way of looking at the different networks. Now we uh, actually take some examples and to see whether actually it's really, really helps us to categorize them into uh, what we want. So the first example that we took is a European health data evidence network is called Eden. So this is the biggest network, a health network in Europe at the moment. It um, has 140 data partners from 26 different countries. Um, the Eden network, they ask all the data partners to transfer their data into all more common data structure. And um, uh, the network is the one who's supervising, who, who look over this uh, ETL process. They control of, of the ETL quality and the final OMOP data quality and everything. So this is a network dependent, network doing most of the work, um, harmonizing data, which is basically changing data into common data model and data valuation. So the data is not moved uh, to a different location. Data is hosted by the local uh, data governor or data processor. Um, so this model is actually the most common model existingly internationally. So in the UK, we see projects like CoConnect, Elevit, uh, Penhop, uh, both of those two projects are actually using exactly the same model. Um, and in the US, there was a network called Healthcare Systems Research Network uh, using the same model, but they don't use OMOP, they use their own um, uh, common data model. And in the Canada, um, the uh, the the network name is called uh, Codes, and that's a network mainly operating in Canada. And they use, again, uh, a different common data model, but functioning in the similar way. And then we looked into uh, another network called International Methodology for uh, Coded Health inform uh, Information. So this network um, is designed, again, for international network of uh, health data sharing. Uh, raw data are converted locally using a CDM. Um, but once the CDM is converted, uh, for each project, the ad hold procedure is programmed to create uh, uh, an analytical, uh, analytical uh, data sets from the CDM. And then those analytical data sets 
and then being shared and pulled together. So in this scenario, similar to Eden, it's a network dependent because network do most of the work. Uh, homogenizing data, common data is used, but it's not data federation, it's data pulling. Data is moved. Um, and then there are other examples, for instance, OpenSafely, which is an analytical platform uh, of EHR in England. Um, basically, they claim they can run trusted analysis without uh, uh, the, the hey, without the uh, without the, the the user actually access to the real data. So OpenSafely framework, they got an automatic tool that can convert the code, the generic code developed by the researcher, to fit to fit into the local data. So basically. What they do is uh, instead of changing the data into common data model, they adapting analysis. However, this adapting analysis work is overseed by the network, not by the user. So they use the automatic tool. And once the uh, research uh, ready data sets is created, the data is pulled together in the central location for the researchers to access. Um, so it's still data pulling. And we looked into Asian, um, I, I, I will never be able to say this word, ASM Pharmacy Epidemiology Network. <laughs> no offense, but uh, it's really difficult for me. Um, so this is a network that covers um, covers Taiwan, Japan, Korea, and Australia, and also their collaborator uh, from Sweden and the United States. How they do is they basically, um, they conduct the analysis in a federated way, but in their case, it's user doing most of the work. They tell user, we have the data, come and have a look at our data, and then go away, code it based on our data structure, send your code into us. We will analyze it against our data and send the results back to you. It's a user dependent, user doing most of the work, adapting analysis, user need to develop the specific code to fit the local data, and the data federation, data is not moved. Um, and last but not the least is the uh, Australian model and the Scottish model. Um, so for the, both the Australian and the Scottish model is a user dependent. Basically the user need to approach each of the nodes and ask for permission to access the data. And uh, once that approve is obtained, the data is pulled into the central location for, the, uh, for, for users to access. And at this point, either using a common data model or not, is really up to the user's uh, uh, choice because it's, it's, it's them doing the most of the work. So, it's a user dependent work and it's a data pooling, but whether harmonizing data or analysis, analysis uh, adapting analysis is really up to the user. So um, now we have understand generally what, what kind of network exists internationally and nationally. Um, uh, still, we are not ready to do this evaluation work about this uh, software solutions. We need to understand what is really needed? What, it, what is a general model of a of query journey before we can do this evaluation? So here, this is our attempt of trying to get that general model. It started with a data request. It goes down to the data and then comes back with the results. So I will take you through this journey to, uh, to really understand each step of it. So it started with a data request. It normally looks like something like a researcher is asking for a cohort size. Uh, who has been prescribed insulin for and who is uh, the patient is more than 65 years old. And once that is developed, it goes with a phenotype library, generate this QI, which is a generic term of a coded language that a computer could understand. And then the query extraction will extract this QI and pass it through query partition. So the query partition actually understand which data is host in where. And in our case, the uh, demo, demographic information and the prescribing information is actually hosted in two different nodes. So that's why our uh, query partition unit actually separate this, this general query into two and send it to uh, individual nodes. As you can see in um, QIG node one, node two, they actually receive different queries. And then the query, query part translation unit kicks in and translate the query into fitted local data. The query gets uh, get executed and all the results got pumped back to the researcher. So 
the good thing about this is this query journey is a generalized model that fits regardless of the network category. So if it's a network adopting common data model, then the ETL of the local data to common data model happens actually from the data source access to data management. And it has less requirements in terms of the query translation layer. But if a not common data model is adopted, then the query translation layer is really important role. You need to make sure the queries are translated correctly. Uh, for user-dependent network, user doing all of the work of the top three, four layers, and for network dependent uh, uh, network, it's a network doing most of the work. And also um, for uh, federation of data pooling, it really depends on the query. For federation, it's uh, sending back the, uh, the aggregate information to me, but for data pooling, it's sending the data back to me. So it's just a change of the query types. So once we have this general model, now we have the specific tool actually to go into those software solutions and I look at how they actually achieve each one of those steps. So we have seven layers and each of those layers, the layer name is provided there. And we correspondingly mapping that into uh, a web communication or human conversation version of an OSI seven layers model. And we look at, so the general plan is we look each layer and each of the solutions, each layer to see how they actually achieve that step. So. The aim to achieve in this project is again, to look at the network's architecture choice and to categorize, compare and contract their software solution tools. We got some primary res uh, results, which is so, we, what we have done is we selected those tools, which is adopted by the software, software uh, networks. And we looked into those aspects of them. It's not really, mapped against the layers that we de developed. It is a network, uh, the next step work that we want to do. And other primary research is just some summaries of how we general feels about those tools. There are some general uh, common, common aspects of those tools. Uh, those are the primary results. So the next step of the future work is going to, uh, as we promised, we're going to map all those tools against our seven layers model and see how they actually do in each of the layers. So questions for all is feedbacks. Do you really think that's the right approach? Uh, do you have any recommendations in terms of a, a software solution evaluation? Um, do you think we're doing a good job or we're doing a shit job? Please do let us know. <laughs> um, that's the end of my presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Chuan. Switch over to the uh, Slido so that we can see what questions we've got. Okay, we've got one question at the moment. So um, it's, so what's the next step? I mean, I know you said a little bit at the end uh, just there, which maybe covers this, but you've got lots of data and sort of lots of analysis. What are the best solutions in your opinion? I mean, how, how are you going to pick that out? That, that, that is a ultimate question that, that I started four years ago. Um, I still can't answer that question really. Um, so the best the solution, first of all, with the best solution to whom? So in my case, is to Scottish Safe Haven Network, which is a quite biospoke network that is established in Scotland. So um, in this work, we want to obviously find the answer for this question, which is finding the best solution for Scottish Safe Haven Network. But at the same time, over this journey, we want to promote a standardized tool that other networks could use to really finding the best solution for themselves. So yes, we're doing this really slow, really, really careful because we really want to generalize our results can be adopted or reused by other networks. Um, so the next step for this analysis is really just looking into those uh, existing software solutions and mapping them against the tools and uh, also mapping those tools against the requirements of the Scottish Safe Haven Network and finding maybe some suggestion or suggestions or solutions that can be adopted by them. Um, but at the same time, in parallel of that work, we want to publish these uh, layered frameworks um, so, so the, the, the community could benefit from that as well. Um, and all we get feedbacks from the community to, to say there was a better way of doing that. Please look at this, things like that. So. Um, we don't have any questions. Other questions on the slide. Are there any question, other questions from the room that people want to ask? Yeah. No. So I, I guess following on from that question that was up there, 
you said, you know, there's the next step of the analysis. Is there anything that you've done from your analysis that obviously says to you, oh, this one's just not good. This, this approach is just not going to be useful for what we're going to do. There's, there's something very obvious in the ones you evaluated that says this isn't the right, this is definitely not going to be the right one. Um, that, that would be a yes for me. So there are some solutions that I look at them, I'll be like, nah, that would be definitely not going to be adopted. But once I bring it up with other collaborators or partners, um, they actually put a lot of valuable feedbacks to me. So it's it's a learning curve for myself. I, I, I really can't emphasize more on the value of a network, network approach to the solution um, together. So uh, me as a researcher, I can be quite biased in some of the solutions, but when we put it uh, on the table and openly discuss with all the other experts in Scotland, we actually uh, always, I find it always quite refreshing in terms of my opinion or knowledge um, to me. So yes, I would, I would easily jump into conclusions sometimes in terms of some, some solutions, but I, I would always be quite cautious and uh, to seek other experts' uh, opinion on this um, to see whether there was a different view on this.